Um, my name is Jennifer Ming. I am the Freshman Academy Counselor at the high school. Um, I, I'm not comfortable with the camera. <laughs> I'm not <being> right. <laughs> okay, so I just have a few points. Um, they all would have come, but apparently we all have duties at the high school. We separate all of the, the responsibilities, and I was a little late to a meeting. And I was told that I am, <laughs> my duty is IPS, so I was like, okay. <laughs> so I get to come. Um, hopefully I can answer all of your questions. We do the same thing. The really great thing about career cruising is that the kids' information stays with them. So they're able to look at the things that they did their seventh grade year, their eighth grade year, and then build upon that as they um, are in high school. So like their matchmaker, for instance, that's the thing that our freshmen do to help them kind of explore their careers a little bit. They have a matchmaker from eighth grade, and then they can see the differences and how, how their choices have kind of changed. We use that at the freshman level to help um, them determine what academy they're going to go into. We don't look at that and say, okay, you, your career said, your interest inventory said you were going to be a lawyer, so you have to be a lawyer, when they're like, no, I want to be a mechanic. We let them choose the mechanic piece of it, and then that's the academy that they they go into. So we just, it's for the kids that really don't have a whole lot of ideas. They, they use that to help them determine their academy. But we use um, our mentoring time. We have mentoring every every day, but Wednesday is our, our, our day, the counselor's day, to get all of our activities in that we are required by the state to get in. Um, so throughout the year, we have career cruising activities that the kids do. Um, at the high school level, we do, like I said, the matchmaker. We also have, um, I wrote it all down, part of it, um, like their career exploring, college planning, so they're able to look at their colleges and do some research, how much the college costs, the financial aid, um, the financial aid planning that they have to do. They're able to put their resumes, store their resumes on career cruising, so we encourage kids to do that. That's part of their activities, their lessons. Um, they keep, they're able to keep track of community service, which we really hammer into them their freshman year because that's when it really starts counting, not necessarily the stuff they did before that, so then they don't have to try and remember everything when they're a senior, what they have been doing for the past four years. So we encourage all of that, and there's just so much more on career cruising that the kids are able to do. Um, those are just some of the things that I could think of. But that's how we use the data for at the high school. Do you have any questions about any of that so far? Can yes. Can, do you think that kids go and use that on their own regularly? Is well, that probably, they probably wouldn't if we didn't encourage them to get logged back into it and continue to do the lessons every few weeks or so. And then the count, one very important thing that I forgot to say is that the counselors, junior and senior year, um, in the junior years they go into the classrooms and they review their, their IPSs with them. And then their senior years they sit down and they meet with them, they have an individual conference about their plans, make sure that everything that they have, um, that, that they have everything that they need. And then they, they can continue with that plan and look back on it after they graduate. I'm not sure the kids do. I love the idea of the resume builder on there. Yeah. And that is part of their, their assignments that they start their freshman year. So their freshman year, they, we have them sit down and um, plan, say, what all are you involved in? Um, and some kids think that they're not involved in any, but through discussion, they, are, they, they find that they're involved in, you know, it may not be at school, but they're in their church choir or, or whatever. So um, we've really encouraged our fifth hour mentoring teachers to take on more of a role of a mentor rather than those conversations just being conversations that they only have with the counselor. So we really are trying to get away from that just because it's probably, hurts me to say it a little bit because I want it to be beneficial, but when they're seeing these teachers every day, they just are going to be more effective than us seeing them once, once a month or once a year even in the classroom to go over some of these things. So the mentor teachers are really doing a really great job of taking on that role of, and then they have the discussion time where they can have a lesson about it. Say, for example, one of your kids says he wants to do that. Mm -hmm. And how, how do they learn what, what the pathway is to be able 
I have not seen so much as the that pathway, and it might, yes, but it has if to. It, if it looks under the cluster, you'll see the career, and then it'll even go ahead and give you your program of study for 9th, okay. 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. It'll show the students what um, classes they need to take at the high school. Just and it goes in to tell you what education level you need, what kind of earnings there are. Mm -hmm. I, it's an amazing program that the kids have access to, and we do all we can to encourage it. And that's why we want more parent involvement, because even at the 7th and 8th grade level, the kids, it's the first time they've really thought about that, but the parents are already trying to think ahead. And so if we can get them more involved to explore this program, they have access to it at home as well as at school, um, we'd like to see them use it more. lot for is for the college like what colleges will have that particular program so I know our students have used that um, pretty regularly yeah and we just barely barely touch on it in our building mm -hmm. and they hopefully are doing a lot yeah, more. yeah I mean I feel like we are I feel like we do a pretty good job of it I mean I'm sure there's always room for improvement um, but which leads me to our next um, our next topic, as some of you might have heard, we have really exciting news. I think it's exciting for our parent-teacher conferences. We're no longer um, going to have spring parent-teacher conferences. This year, it's going to be called um, Individual Plans of Study Conferences. So what this means is our fifth hour teachers, we're gonna kinda go back. I used to work in an elementary school before I came to the high school, and it reminds me of that. Like, the, uh, the homeroom teacher schedules their, their conferences. So our fifth hour teachers are going to schedule their conferences. They're gonna contact the parents um, and have and set up a specific time where they can come in and go over their child's plan of study. So um, I think if you wanna go to how we're doing that, well, this you can't see this obviously. <laughs> um, I just kinda wanted to tell you what it is. The counselors have developed a script so that teacher, because teachers were really uneasy about it at first. Not all of them, but but they were a little scared. <laughs> first of all, because it, we are really making sure they knew what career cruising was all about, and then they're having to talk to parents about it, um, which was a little overwhelming, and they, they're all going to do such a great job, but um, we created a script, so they actually have the information when they call home of what to say, what it's about, what the IPS is, how conferences are going to be different this year, um, and we have we also have a child we created a student script as well so the parent could or so the student could call home and say hi mom we're doing conferences a little different um, I need you to come in and meet with my teacher at this time and then schedule the time whatever works same same days as everybody else's conferences but it'll be specific time that works for the family um, so this is just some information about all the time and go to the next slide I think okay so this is what we gave through the teachers this is an outline and it's actually a little bit shorter but it wouldn't look pretty on two pages so I just cut it into one um, but this is their outline so that and actually what we've decided in all of our PLCs the counselors met with all of their teachers and the PLCs and we kind of just discussed the best way for this information to be given to the parents and what almost everybody the consensus is, is that kids will kind of come up with a project so a lot of our teachers said like PowerPoint or something along those lines. So the kids are going to take their information from career cruising and answer these eight questions about themselves. Um, like what their matchmaker results were. Do you agree with that? Do you think that you're going to, um, do you think you would be a good teacher or, or whatever? So the, the, they'll have like slides that they can go through and the kid will show their parent what their career cruising says. So. Parents are gonna learn a lot. I think kids are going to learn a lot. I mean, I think kids are gonna learn. It's just gonna be a conversation that a lot of these kids will have with their parents that they don't typically have. Um, so you talk about your day a little bit or what you want for dinner or whatever, but actually coming talking about some of these questions isn't always what, what you do. So um, then we have it into grades level specifics because every year you add a little bit more with career cruising. So ninth grade doesn't do as much with career cruising as like a senior would. Um, but this will be a time where they start talking about what academy are you going to go into next year? Um, 
that kind of thing with freshmen and then all the way down to seniors. If you're going to college, did you apply? Where? Have you completed your FAFSA? Have you applied for scholarships? So the conference is just going to be this. It's not going to be parent teacher conferences where our attendance has been pretty low um, in the spring conference conferences so I know everybody's been kind of wanting to change that for quite a while now so this is just going to be something we try we're hoping for a good response you never know what you're gonna get but um, the teachers after we provided them with all this information they were a lot more I think at ease um, to to set this up and to get this going and then to know that the kids are the one these are all student-led conferences it's not the teacher leading this it's the student talking about what their life is, their future planning, their career, what they want to do. It's the kid talking about this. So they'll be doing that, working on that with their mentor teachers. Um, our mentoring numbers are typically pretty low, um, no more than 25, which I know sounds not, not low, but at the high school that is low numbers. So I think that's all. I'm not for sure how other teachers, how elementary teachers uh -huh. set up their conferences, but mm -hmm. you said that the teachers would be calling the parents and setting up these conferences. The time, right. When, when do the teachers do that? When they're, they have plan okay. after school, whenever works for them. Or like we said, for some of the teachers, it might be a little overwhelming. That's why we created the student script as well. So they could say, okay, Peter, come up here, call your mom and tell her, see if any of these times work for her during the mentoring time. So that's the 25 minutes a day that they have with that student. And then they keep that student for their fifth hour also. So if it's a, they need to run into that fifth hour time a little bit, maybe they might not mind. But. And, a, and a parent that we don't have a phone number on is, I mean, is, is that, do we The thing I've learned is the kids always have their parents' number. Okay. <laughs> we might not have their number, but when I need to get a hold of a parent, I'm like, call your mom. And they <laughs> pull out their phone and call their mom. Because they, they, they know. They just don't like to give that information to us sometimes. <laughs> well, this sounds really interesting. Yeah. It, it will be really fun to see how that turns out. Like, hopefully, we'll, we'll um, have them the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, like I said, we were all scared at first, even us. I was like, oh, what are we looking And then, it just through talking and conversation, it just got, we all just felt so much more at ease about it. And it might be a total flop, and people would hate it, but I think we need to try something different, so. My two cents worth on that is it's kind of a learning experience for kids and parents on how to have conversations with your child that are meaningful about their future. And this gives them some support, that mentoring teacher can support and facilitate the conversation, but the student leads it with support from the teacher, the mentor, and then the parent can start to learn some of the thought processes of you can't wait till second semester of your senior year to really start thinking. That's what I'm most excited about is we're putting some steps and guidance in place for parents and students to have academic-minded conversations. Yeah, you bet. Okay. I'm going to jump in just as head principal at the high school, and Jen did a great job of, of explaining it. But my, my experience as a parent, uh, we're going into our last set of parent-teacher conferences. Reagan's a senior, last one. And this one's going to be different, and we're excited about it. Due to the career pr pr cruising program, she found out her interests. Uh, it said she should be <laughs> study podiatry. She doesn't want to be a podiatrist, but <laughs> she, she it, on the list was radiologist, and she wants to do radiology. And through career cruising, she found out Fort Hayes State is the only school in Kansas that offers a four-year degree in radiology. So that's where she started to hone in her career exploration. She found out by, on her own what it took to be accepted there, what ACT score, what other things she needed to do. Uh, all of her community service was already on career cruising when she wanted to apply for a National Honor Society or when she wanted to do her college application. That was all there. As a family, she didn't have to go research that. As a parent, she already it helped, it helped us help her. It was already there. And this set of parent-teacher conferences, uh, I'm actually looking forward to. I'm looking forward to as a parent because I know it's going to be different than all of the other parent-teacher conferences for all the years with each of my daughters because Reagan is going to lead it and tell us about, about her future.
and what she wants to do in her future. And I look, I look forward to those of you who are having have students at the high school, your reactions to coming in and meeting for these things, because I think it'll, it'll be different than each of the other ones. And one last thing to add is that the teachers are planning to tell the kids, or this is a conversation we've had, that you're, they're only going to get into it what they put into it. So if they like don't have a very good presentation for their parents, then then they're not going to have a very good presentation for their parents. So teachers all have access, and they know how to. If a parent shows up without a student, they all know how to get onto every student's career cruising, and they can go through it and navigate through it on their own without the child being present. So. Several students or several schools in the area have done this before, but they've all been very much smaller districts. So to think of doing it with 2,200 students, we're a little bit less now that we've got our early grads out, um, was an overwhelming thought process. So yeah, and and feeling like the counselors were the ones responsible for it because we ultimately feel that way. Like, how are we going to tell parents about this? So it's such a nice. Um, team effort and the, that's, I don't know, that I feel like it's going to go well. So. Next we have Vita Delarosa, um, Burn City Alternate Education Center counselor. So, um, so I had a handout of um, the IPS that we use currently at um, Garden City Alternate Education Center. We have a smaller um, enrollment group, so we're able to physically um, use our papers um, to work with the students during mentoring time. Um, on our IPS, we utilize ACT. Um, this year, the juniors and seniors will be taking the test at our school on February 20th. Um, we're gonna look at their um, profile and education and career planning, strengths and weaknesses and content areas. Um, we'll have that discussion um, with their mentoring teachers as well as with me. Um, we will do the worksheets um, sometime in April. Uh, and then we're going to use that information to measure their workplace skills, um, assessment, three core areas, and then locating information, applied mathematics, reading for information. And um, that's something that some of our students who are not going to go on to college, that they could um, get a certificate and immediately use in the workforce. And that's starting to become more popular um, with employers and students. So it's something that's just gonna grow from here on out. Um, we look at goal setting. We want our students to um, look at some personal goals that they wanna set, whether it's um, health-wise, whether it's um, physical, mental, things like that. Um, educational goals. Um, we have some students who come to us as freshmen and they want to be done in three years. So what does that look like? What do I need to do in the long term to get that done? Um, and then when do they want to look at accomplishing those? Um, some of our students <coughs> will come to school and they'll be in the classrooms, but then they'll come and ask me, hey, can I work on an Edgenuity class on my own time as well? Because I want to proceed um, faster and get those extra credits to be done. Or they've come behind and want to get caught up. And so they want to put in that time and effort with an extra class. Um, the requirement is they still have to be passing their regular classes to get that Edgenuity class. So, um, and then we have college exploration. Um, and then we look at different types. Are they gonna go to a trade school, two year, four year, um, military. Um, we look at the program of study that they want to go into, which career cruising will let them see what are their interests, um, the cost, 
process to apply in college visits. Last year was the first year that we actually actually took alternative school students to a four-year college to give them exposure to it. None of, really none of our kids are gonna go to a four-year from graduating with us, but I think if they can have the exposure to it to see what's beyond a two-year, what's beyond high school, um, that will at least plant that seed for them. Um, we use career cruising. Um, all students complete ninth through 12th grade. Uh, the ability profiler, career matchmaker, goals, skills, and abilities. And I think they did a great job of explaining that. Um, and then we use the ASVAB. Um, the last three years, it was required that all students 10th through 12th grade take the ASVAB. Um, this year, since we are requiring our students to take the ACT, uh, we're making the ASVAB optional. So they can still take the ASVAB if they want. Um, and it's free for them to use. Parent involvement. So at the beginning of the school year, last year was the first year that we did actual enrollment. So our goal is to, um, when the parents come and enroll, for them to see the initial IPS and um, explain it to them and explain how the year is going to look with the IPS. Um, we give them the career cruising letter for the login information at that time. Um, and they can log in and see, you know, what it's like if they have any questions or things like that. Um, Parent-teacher conferences, one-to-one um, -one appointments, phone conversations, and then um, site council, um, which we're working on getting more involved in. Oh, like what they're doing? I, that's kind of, yeah. I mean, I think eventually we'll get to that direction. Um, I think I'd have to get everyone on board as to how that would look and stuff, but I really liked their idea and stuff, so, yeah. Seeing your check, um, Mark told us the principal. We did, we did those in Marion, um, and like she said, a lot of success, but a much smaller district. Um, so, yes, in time, Similar script, a little bit different. Um, I have what, what I use as the school counselor when I was in Marion, but our, our conference attendance went up from 15% to almost 95 in, 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 in one turnaround, in one, in one semester of student led. So, in a smaller setting like ours, I think the parents will be much more willing to listen to their student talk than, than to hear the teachers. And so, yes, in, in time, we will, we will have those as well. In our So what are we doing with the data? Um, <coughs> we're looking at the number of students who have intentions of continuing their education, because um, we do have quite a few that do go on to the two-year, more than um, people probably think, um, and it's pretty exciting. Um, the job course areas of career interest uh, will utilize scores in the content areas of the ACT map to adjust instructional needs where they're struggling or things like that. Um, student, staff, parent communication, and then utilize during mentoring and JAG time to help students focus on and or reach their goals. So, do you have any questions? Any questions about IPS and kind of the, the journey we're on with IPS? Can I say one more thing about conferences? Just in case any of you guys get asked about it, we have, um, the teachers are trying to schedule 20 minute um, time slots and then if you have another teacher that you would like to see because your child might be struggling in that class um, we are really discouraging you just to be able to go and talk to that teacher but rather set up an appointment with that teacher to respect everybody's time um, slot that way we don't get all um, messed up with everybody squeezing in and so if anybody asks you or has that question that is and, and also piggyback on that we if a teacher knows that a student is struggling, we don't want them to wait around for parent-teacher conference time to come right. and hope a parent comes right. in. We want the teachers to be more proactive <laughs> about making that phone call home instead of just waiting around for parent-teacher conference time to come. So it works both ways. Yeah. 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 Y